Well, hello, everyone. I really have a very special pleasure and privilege uh, this afternoon to sit down with our outgoing uh, economic counselor and chief economist, uh, Maury Obsfeld, who's uh, heading back to Berkeley. And uh, I also have with, th with us today uh, Gita Gopinath, who is our incoming economic uh, counselor and head of the research department. And Gita's coming to us from Harvard. And uh, I'm going to ask them each a couple of questions to get their thoughts on how they see uh, the year ahead. Maury, uh, can I start with you? How do you see the major economic challenges facing the world in 2019? Well, Jerry, it's indeed a difficult time, and um, partly it's because of the context in which um, any challenges will uh, uh, emerge next year, and that's a context in which uh, global cooperation seems to be more challenged than it has been in a long time. Uh, you know, we are obviously worrying about the uh, tensions on the trade front between the U.S. and China, but also uh, between the U.S. and other economies. We worry about the uh, pressures on emerging markets from the Fed's normalization, as necessary as that is. But having these occur at a time where there is some uh, substantial international discord is going to be a challenge um, if difficulties arise. Uh, I wonder if this sort of cooperative spirit that we saw from the G20 when the global financial crisis broke will prevail. Um, if not, um, it could be a very uh, rough ride. Thanks, Maria. Gita, how do you see next year? I uh, kind of fully agree with uh, everything Maury said, and I think he's absolutely right, which is that, you know, this is one of the first uh, periods of retreat from globalism that we have seen uh, since the last many decades when countries have you know, cut tariffs and there's been more integration and trade costs have come down. Um, so this is a real, a real threat. Um, it's shown up in terms of actual tariffs being put in place. Uh, I think what remains, and we'll just add in addition to what Maury said, is I think what remains is a tremendous amount of uncertainty going forward about where the world economy is headed and where policies specifically are headed. So while it seems right now that maybe there is some pause on the trade tensions, um, you know, there's, there is still valid concern that maybe in a, in a couple of months, all of these tensions could resurface all over again. Uh, there's uncertainty in addition on what's happening with Brexit. Uh, we don't have a resolution at this point. Emerging markets, there's tremendous uncertainty there. It's going to depend on what's going to happen with U.S. Uh, Fed policy. It's going to depend on what's happening with commodity markets. And we know that uncertainty of this kind can have a dampening effect on world growth. So, uh, you know, the scenario uh, has significant downside risks going forward. Thank you. I want to turn to uh, a bit more of a personal question for each of you, if you don't mind. Uh, Gita, I'd like to ask you, perhaps, first, uh, what are you most looking forward to in terms of coming to the IMF and the, and the prospect of that? Uh, I'm just very excited about the job and all aspects of it. Um, I mean, firstly, uh, you know, I've said this before, but there's hardly any other place in the world where you can get such a large number of highly qualified economists working on topics that are very dear to my heart on you know, international economics, international trade, international finance. And so that's going to be uh, is incredibly valuable for me, too, uh, as a learning experience. Uh, I'm also excited about the new aspects of the job in terms of uh, the, the economic counselor role, in terms of providing advice, in terms of working with countries closely. Um, I also really look forward to working across departments. So, all of this is great, and I should absolutely add that, you know, Maury has been such a tremendous resource in these last couple of months. I mean, and not just reactively, proactively, in the sense that there are many things I don't know about, and I don't even know to ask him the questions, but he's kind of anticipated it. He's uh, taken such an interest in, in helping me with this transition. I just cannot thank him enough. Mm. Thank you. Maury, slightly different take on the question. What are you going to miss most about the IMF? I think that's an easy one to answer. It's the people, 
right? I mean, everyone here has been so open-handed, open-hearted, cooperative, supportive, you know, since the day I walked in the door. And given the, the vast store of talent and knowledge here going way beyond, you know, what I know, everyone has been willing to come forward and, uh, and share, share that and share their experiences. And that's really helped me in the role. Uh, so that makes it all the more, uh, you know, easy uh, for me to uh, kind of repay by uh, trying to do everything I can to get Gita well situated. She's going to be fantastic here, and I know everyone's going to love her. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a real pleasure to, uh, to uh, watch her, uh, you know, in this role, uh, sort of promoting the great mission of this institution. And it is a great mission. Um, we have a unique role in the international system. Um, we are a long-lived, long-horizon institution in a world where governments tend to have short horizons. And so our voice is a critical and important voice. And I know that um, Gita will be um, uh, getting that message across in a way that makes the world a better place. Thanks, Maury. I know I can speak for all colleagues uh, at the fund to say we're going to miss you. Uh, incredibly. And Gita, likewise, I know I speak for all colleagues at the fund and saying there's tremendous excitement about you joining us in uh, January. So thank you again for being here today and for, for doing this with me. Thank you. It's a pleasure.